you're watching day or night x x is for exotics they call me devil of the night and on this spotlight we're going to be covering the nandu carapanensis the brazilian red and this is my specimen argos this is an unsexed specimen and i'm leaning towards female i've had this tarantula perhaps maybe for three or four years i got it as a freebie and i can't even remember what package i got it in with obviously because it's been quite a while but this one is due for a rehouse, which we'll see in this vid, and we'll also see how I go about my business doing rehouses, and we're also going to give this girl, as you saw at the beginning of this vid, a feeding. I'm going to refer to her as a female until otherwise uh, known or confirmed, but I am pretty sure this is a female. The growth rate on this one is significantly slower than my other Nandu species, the Nandu chromatis. This particular species has a much slower growth rate. In order to rehouse this one, I actually had to go out and clean out a few tubs, not only for this tarantula, but a couple of other tarantulas that I would like to rehouse into new enclosures. But I also want to show this one. My wife sits out watermelon and leftover cereal and things like that. And this squirrel is always hanging out in my house. So when I went outside to go clean those tubs, Here's this guy, he lays just like this. He doesn't really give a damn if I'm out there or not. He just does his own thing. He gets his food, kind of lays there and chills. But I, th I thought it'd be nice to show you with you guys what I see on a regular basis when I walk out on my deck. And that's a damn squirrel. While I was out there, I actually saw one of the tubs that I needed to clean out a long time ago, one of my BP tubs. Decided to clean this one out as well. I usually just go out on a nice day like this. It's very hot and humid. Just take it, hose them down. No big deal. We've all done this before. And one of the things I like about being able to get outside in the summer is just being able to go out and just kind of power wash a lot of my tubs and water dishes and everything like that that I can get out. I try to do all that I can with that while the weather is still permitting before the winter season because obviously you can't get out as much but once they're all cleaned up they're ready to go back in and the fun begins is setting up the enclosure and like i said this poor little guy i mean as long as we have food out there we're always going to have a friend in this house that squirrel as you see laying down again just doesn't give a shit out the tubs are all ready to be uh, put together with all the necessities that a tarantula would need this one's around three and a half inches Argo's used to excavate she no longer does that she's not as flighty as she used to be and this is very similar to what I used to keep my nandu chromatis in uh, that cup right there is just a just a plastic cup that you would see in any store um, 16 to 32 uh, uh, ounce cup it's perfect for these guys um, I just kind of laid the cup in sideways, fill it up with substrate in between uh, to keep the weight down so the tarantula can't move it. I'll glue in wood on top of a nice, heavy, decorative plant, something like that. You can even add rocks if you like, uh, wood, bark, anything like that. It's equal earth substrates in there. The water dish is actually just a mealworm container that I cleaned out. And so you don't have to break the bank trying to furnish these animals. This tub is just a tub that I got from Walmart. Uh, burn some holes in there and you're ready to go Once the cage is set up, I always give it a good misting depending on what type of species it is This one likes a little more damp uh, But also like his dry spots and once the the Tarantula is ready to go in then it's time to rehouse them. Now, I did that off camera She did not put up a fight. She went right in. I didn't even have to put it inside of a cup She went right out of the old enclosure into this new one that mini creator keeper was uh, obviously way too small for her so it was this is time for her to be able to utilize her new playground which I believe she'll love again this is a very similar setup that I had with my Nandu chromatis at this exact same size although my Nandu chromatis was a huge excavator this one wasn't as much 
when they were around the same size. She actually looks so tiny in this enclosure, but this is a perfect size enclosure. Believe me, this is not too big if you're a beginner uh, for this animal. She will utilize every single inch of this enclosure and she'll feel safe having a nice big hide to hide in. And there's also moss thrown in there. And we're gonna see how comfortable she is with this because she's gonna eat on camera right now. As you can see, not even a rehouse would deter this beautiful animal from eating moments after she's been put into a new enclosure. She just really has always been great with that. She never complained about her environment. And like I said, when she was teeny tiny, when I first got her, she was so flighty and so blindingly fast. It was amazing. I used to get so nervous even opening up the enclosure because she was so unpredictable and she was a teleporter. And now she's finally gotten to the point where I can take a, the paintbrush, gently tap her on the rump to get her to go where she needs to go. Like I said, the rehouse transfer went fine with her. She was awesome. Didn't run, didn't kick any hairs. And that's really rare for her. So that means she's finally started to come into her own. She's finally getting to a, a point where she's comfortable with her surroundings. Because when she was a baby and when she was teeny tiny, she was not. This animal, like I said, even though it was a freebie, I think I would have ended up buying this species anyway. I love the Nandu genus, and I would not mind uh, uh, getting a, a Colorado Velosum and a Tripepi to kind of fill up that Nandu genus even that much further. These are awesome animals, and if you like Nandus, you will love this one.